for people, it matters how rapidly you come to rest. Anyone recognize Colonel Stapp? Okay, then we get to play the video. <laughs> yes. I can try to play the video. Okay, so this is where I think I have to mirror. Hang on. <laughs> In 1947, in the deserts of New Mexico, an Air Force colonel named John Stapp began a bizarre, top-secret aeromedical project that would lead to the development of the first crash test dummies. So you all can aspire to become crash test dummies. Business in the sense that he was interested in how to protect air crewmen uh, when they ejected uh, out of an aircraft at high speed, and he didn't know any way to study that other than to subject human volunteers to loading that's very similar. Yeah. Yeah. The rules of Doesn't that yeah. look fun? Okay, it gets, it gets grosser. <laughs> I'll leave you the link so that you can watch it in the privacy of your own room. <laughs> He was okay. Um, when he really got into it, uh, turn display mirroring off, um, he was on a sled that went... Was it a rocket sled? Yeah, it was a rocket sled, and so he set the land speed record at the time uh, and experienced something like 42 and change G-forces. What's a G-force? Okay. The acceleration that he experienced was 42 times the acceleration due to gravity. Um, and he mostly blacked out. Um, it, they show this in the movie, so I'm sparing you some of the gory details. But all sorts of blood vessels popped in his eyes. Uh, he lost vision for a while. But as they say in Monty Python, he got better. <laughs> <laughs> So, so he, he was important in figuring out uh, what would be the maximum acceleration that the human body tolerates. And that is important research um, for things like cars. So um, let's see, I have another gross vid. Uh, OK, hang on. <clears throat> Yeah, unpleasantness is, I think, the one we want to go for. <laughs> hang on, hang on. Ah, get over here. Now, one of the cars got airborne and it slammed upside down like it's a nasty, nasty crash with the exit of the back straightaway. So as we watch the car come to a stop and the IndyCar Series safety crew go to the attention of all the cars, the yellow flag is out. It looks like Tommy Schechter was involved in the incident and Kenny Breck Ooh. also involved in the incident. And Mark, it looks like it touched up. Uh, the two cars may have touched one another at the end of the back straight setting up for turn number three. They were battling for position. There's no question for that. Those two had been running close to side by side at the exit of turn number two. And uh, they got together at the end of the back straightaway and there is debris all over the place. Now you may not have noticed that the car runs into a pole. Maybe you did. Um, and the, um, you would guess, I should think, that um, Mr. Brack would um, be no more with us, except that the design of the car and the shell surrounding him um, allowed him to survive that, that crash. Um, what's most important in surviving uh, is that you have adequate time to go from, well, hopefully most of you are not, you and Justin Bieber are not going at <laughs> 200 mile, miles per hour um, b before you, uh, you come rapidly to rest. But the idea is that if you build into the car uh, enough 
crumple zone so that the, the material of the car which first encounters the unpleasantness starts to accordion and gradually slows down the passenger uh, cage that you can then uh, make the car safer because the driver doesn't experience a whopping acceleration. So you prolong the, the duration over which the momentum of the driver goes from whopping to nothing and thereby reduce the acceleration and therefore the body damage to the driver. So one of the strategies for um, the next generation of automobiles uh, described by Amory Lovins in winning the oil endgame um, is to make the vehicles very lightweight but strong out of things like carbon fiber and composite materials. Um, and this, uh, there's another video you can watch here associated with uh, a cone of material that would absorb a lot of the energy in a crash and allow uh, a car to be very safe and yet very light. At the moment, we have lots of very large vehicles that are very heavy, and so you make yourself safer by being in a tank, but that comes at a consequence of burning lots of extra fuel and making people who drive smaller vehicles like smart cars less safe. 